Back in June, um, I started another irregular series of lessons. An irregular series because it's not going to be preached on sequential Sundays, just sort of as the mood hits, I guess we might say. Um, but th that irregular series was dealing with the subject of being prepared. Uh, in light of what uh, 1 Peter 3.15 tells us to always be prepared, prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Well, we've come to an interesting time of the year. It's a time when some people once again struggle with what we might term the Christmas question. Should it be observed by the church? Should it be observed by Christians as the birth of Christ? Should it be observed by Christians as a secular holiday? Should it be observed by Christians at all? Now what I'm going to say this morning is probably not going to be anything new to uh, most everyone uh, that is here. However, we do have some newer members. And perhaps we have some of our, well let's call them more tenured members. That uh, perhaps... Uh, wonder from time to time uh, why we don't have a Christmas pageant, why we don't have a manger scene out on the front yard out here, uh, why we uh, don't have special Christmas Eve services or Christmas Day services, you know, why uh, we don't do any of those other things that they know that other churches or religious bodies do during this time of the year. Why don't we do them? So if we're going to be always prepared to make a defense for the hope, uh, for the reason of the hope that is in us, we need to be able to answer the, the Christmas question. And I think, or I hope so, or it might be this way, a lot of times that doesn't really work. What we need to do is be able to answer it based on what the Bible teaches us. So this morning I want us to begin by making a couple of distinctions, okay? The first thing I want us to distinguish between is a personal observance of Christmas and a congregational observance of Christmas. Uh, celebrating it personally or as a church. And as far as celebrating Christmas as a church, we also want to distinguish between a limited celebration or recognition of Christmas and a full-fledged celebration of Christmas as a religious holiday or holy day. Now, historically, the Church of Christ has had little to do with the celebration of Christmas as a religious holiday. While other churches have their Christmas pageants, their manger scenes, their Christmas Eve and Christmas Day services, and the like, we have largely ignored the religious celebration of Christmas. The most Christmassy a congregation of the Church of Christ may get is to decorate with poinsettias during the month of December. In fact, many congregations, if their service times conflict with Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, many times they'll cancel those services or, or change those service times. Uh, this year, uh, Christmas is on a Wednesday. We have announced that we are not going to be having our Wednesday night services that night. Why have we done that? Why did we announce it? Why did we come to that decision? Uh, why have we taken this position? Should we continue to hold this position? Or, or should we celebrate Christmas as a religious holiday, complete with all of the above activities? If so, why? If not, why not? Well, believe it or not, all of those series of questions actually raises a whole bunch of other questions as well. Um, first, should Christians participate, a Christian participate in Christmas as a cultural holiday? Okay, we're talking cultural here. Uh, not the spiritual aspects, religious aspects of it, just, just culturally speaking. Most would answer yes, though there are some, and I've, I've met a few actually, that believe a Christian should not celebrate Christmas at all, or at least not culturally. I mean, I, I met a guy who, uh, he was dead set that the religious aspects were all it needed to be about, and he said things in front of little kids that uh, just, even though we didn't have children at the time, just made my blood boil. 
because he was trying to invoke and uh, 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 force other people to adopt his idea. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. But uh, uh, it's a matter of personal freedom, culturally speaking. The same as whether or not you choose to observe and honor Thanksgiving Day or Labor Day or Valentine's Day. Now, guys, don't misunderstand what I just said, okay? You need to do it, okay? You need to pay it. You need to know when February 14th is and, and buy your sweetheart something on that day, okay? Uh, but anyway, uh, but, but it's the same with Christmas, culturally speaking. If someone wants to put up a Christmas tree, decorate their house with lights, uh, putting their kids to bed uh, with the thought that Santa Claus isn't going to come until they're fast asleep, any of these cultural aspects, they are free to do so. Um, and, uh, it, and no other person should criticize or condemn them for their decision to do it, just as we should not criticize or condemn someone who chooses not to observe the, the cultural aspects of the Christmas holiday. Uh, again, we should, uh, uh, no one should try to impose their views about Christmas and the cultural aspects of it on anyone else. The cultural aspects of Christmas are just that, cultural. And believe it or not, we do things differently in the United States than they do elsewhere in the world. So the cultural aspects are a given. No real discussion of them is necessary. But there are some other questions that we do need to discuss. Uh, because they do have... They have to do with the religious aspects of Christmas. The first is, should a Christian personally participate in Christmas as a religious holiday? Should a Christian personally remember and honor the birth of Jesus on December 25th? <clears throat> well, let me share with you first some observations that, uh, that I've made. One is that the New Testament teaches that the birth of Jesus has tremendous religious significance. Think about it. It was the fulfillment of prophecy. Several prophecies. Virgin being with child. Uh, the town, Bethlehem, being prophesied. And, and others as well. So it was the fulfillment of prophecy. That gives it religious significance. Not only that, it was the incarnation of God. I mean, you can't get any more religiously significant than that. God becoming man. We ought to study and we ought to appreciate the significance of the birth of Jesus just like we do with other doctrines. However, even as I say it, that the New Testament teaches that the birth of Jesus has tremendous religious significance, the New Testament does not teach the observance of the birth of Jesus as a religious holiday. Under the New Covenant, every day is special to God. Under the New Covenant, Sunday, the first day of the week, is the day that is set aside for us to assemble to remember the sacrifice of Jesus, the Lord's Supper, which, by the way, the Lord's Supper is the only commemorative act authorized by the New Testament. There is no uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day services talked about, uh, no uh, other religious holiday services, no holy days, no sunrise services, not even on Easter are mentioned or are commanded in the New Testament. Thus, there is nothing in Scripture that requires a Christian to celebrate Christmas as a religious holiday in honor of the birth of Jesus. If a Christian chooses not to uh, celebrate Christmas as a holy day, that is an acceptable decision to God. Which is what I had to explain to my friend that I told you about earlier who had this idea that it was all about the religious and if you, if you brought any cultural aspects in then you were wrong and you were sinning. No, you're not. But could it not be argued that whether or not a Christian chooses to celebrate Christmas in honor of the birth of Christ is a matter of personal freedom before God? I believe it can be argued as a matter of personal freedom before God. And not just argued like I'm going to tell you my opinion and you don't have any choice, you have to accept. I'm talking about from Scripture, it can be argued. Uh, well, let's, let's look at some Scriptures. Okay? Uh, Romans chapter 14. 
One issue of Romans 14 is the acceptability of Jewish Christians keeping some of the Old Covenant regulations as a matter of personal faith. I know y'all talked about this in, in the auditorium class this morning. This might be a slightly different take on, on what was discussed, but, but I think that, you know, it, it's all good, though, right? Think we're, we're good. Yeah, all right. So anyway, um, according to Acts 21, verse 20, many Jews, after they became Christians, uh, continued to keep at least some of the requirements of the law. For example, the Sabbath and some food regulations. This was the situation at Rome, okay? And it caused, it caused conflict between Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians. Paul addressed that issue in Romans chapter 14. It's important to note that the issue of Romans 14 is whether these things should be observed as a matter of personal faith and practice. Okay, we're not talking about a congregational level. We're talking about a matter of personal faith and practice. Um, this was an issue whether individual believers should keep these things as a matter of personal faith and practice. Romans 14, verse 22, So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Okay, obviously it's a personal issue. Uh, so this matter, you might say, well, then why does Paul talk about it in a letter that is addressed to the church at Rome? It's a fair question. You see, this matter became a church issue because of the judgmental attitudes that were displayed over this issue by Jews and Gentiles alike. When it comes to whether a Christian should celebrate one day as more sacred than another as part of personal faith, Paul allows it. If you want to look at Romans 14, verses 5 through 8, one person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Most likely the application here is to keeping the Sabbath and possibly some other Jewish feast days. You know, a person comes out of Judaism and the rest of their family still celebrates these feasts and everything. And it's a family occasion where they can go and spend time with their family. You know, that, that's all good. According to Paul, if someone wants to personally honor the Sabbath as a day special to God, the Sabbath, incidentally, Saturday, never in the New Testament is the Sabbath transferred to Sunday or is Sunday called the Christian Sabbath or anything like that. But, uh, but if someone wants to honor the Sabbath day as a seventh day or Sunday even as, as a special day to God, that is acceptable to God. Look back at verse 3. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains and let, let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats for God has welcomed him. The issue changes if that person wants to teach the practice as God's will or bind that practice on others. In that case, the practice is made a salvation issue and such is not acceptable to God. In a few moments, we're going to look at Galatians chapter 4, verses 8 through 11, where the same issue is discussed, except it's in a different context. It's in the context of somebody teaching this as God's will for the church. And that was not correct. But anyway, we'll get to Galatians 4 in a few moments. As long as the observance is kept a matter of personal faith and practice between them and God, Romans 14, 22, then it is acceptable. What does this have to do with what we're talking about, though? Well, let's make a little bit of some applications, okay? Uh, could not Paul's teaching on the observance of special days as a matter of personal faith also be applied to the personal observance of Christmas as a day to honor the birth of Christ? If not, why not? If someone wanted to observe Christmas as a special day to honor the birth of Christ and that observance is kept as a matter of personal faith and practice, then it is acceptable before God. And by the way, if 
They wanted to personally set aside a day to honor the birth of Jesus on January 12th. That would be fine. Or if they wanted to do so on June 24th, that would be fine. Or if they wanted to do so on December 25th, that would be fine. It is accept, thus it is um, thus the, but the issue changes if the observance is taught as God's will or bound on others. But as long as the uh, celebration is kept a matter of personal faith and practice, Romans 14, 22, then it is acceptable to God, Romans 14, 3 and 4. It's a matter of personal freedom. Same with the cultural aspects of, of Christmas, so with the religious aspects on a personal level. If you want to do it, you're free to do it. If you don't want to do it, you're free not to do it. But what about as a church? Should the church celebrate Christmas as a religious holiday or holy day? Well, you know, one thing we like to do when we uh, talk about things on a church or a congregation level is we like to look at others, don't we? want to see what everybody else is doing, right? So the observance of Christmas that began in the 3rd or 4th centuries, now that's very important, began in the 3rd or 4th century, not the 1st century, okay? The 3rd or 4th century uh, has become, for at least the Catholic Church, a full-fledged religious holiday or holy day. In the Catholic Church... Um, Wow, you know what, it just dawned on me. I hope this isn't being picked up over there. But that could uh, uh, be a little bit awkward. But anyway, in the Catholic Church, uh, Christmas is one of the two most holy days of the year. Easter is the other. In the Catholic faith, the observance of Christmas is required as part of the faith. It has become a salvation issue. The practice of other churches is very similar. In many denominations, the observance of Christmas has become a holy day for the church. Christmas is given signif religious significance. It is given significance above other days. All church activities are devoted to the observance of Christmas during the holiday season. Uh, everyone is expected to participate. It would be unthinkable for a church not to celebrate it. Christmas is treated as a holy day and the entire church is expected to participate and observe it as such. For all practical purposes, the, the ob observance of Christmas in many denominations is a salvation issue. Now I've used that term a couple of times, three, three times actually this morning, salvation issue. What am I talking about when I say the term salvation issue? I mean something is, number one, taught as God's will for the entire church, and two, the entire church is expected to participate. The personal freedom of one to participate or not to participate is not taught or even given consideration. Let me give you an example of something that is a salvation issue. Baptism for the forgiveness of sins. That is clearly taught in Scripture. That is something that is, is very plainly taught in Scripture. If somebody chooses not to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins, then they are choosing the wrong side of a clear salvation issue. Okay, baptism in water, immersed in water for the forgiveness of sins, that's a salvation issue. So... Uh, is it right for any church to make the observance of Christmas a holy day? To elevate it to a salvation issue? In a word, no. Absolutely not, it's not right. Uh, even if everyone else is doing it, it's not right. I mean, what, what do we do when, when our kids come to us and they want to do something, and we say, well, why do you want to do that? And they say, well, because everybody else is doing it. Why do we tell them? That doesn't make it right. If everybody else was jumping off a cliff, would you? Well, no. So why do... Why, that, that's not justification for an act and it doesn't make it right. So uh, you might say, okay, well, Carl, that's interesting, but uh, where do you get that from, in, it, from the Bible? I mean, you said we're going to talk about the Bible. Okay, well, let's look at the Bible. Let's take a, another look at Scripture. Uh, first of all, let's turn to Mark 7, verses 7 and 8. 
The context of Mark 7 is that Jesus is addressing the religious traditions of men that the Pharisees had elevated to the commandments of God. This was wrong, plain and simple. Man has no right to make rules where God has made none. And so in Mark 7, 7 and 8, Jesus says, In vain do they worship me, teaching his doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandments of God and hold the, to the tradition of men. So in the context, is he's talking about traditions that the Pharisees have elevated to the command of God. The application we can make is, could this not be applied to the making of Christmas a holy day? If not, why not? I mean, uh, uh, the observance of Christmas is not taught in Scripture. The word Christmas is not mentioned in Scripture. King James has it one time where it's supposed to be Passover or something to that, effect, but, but it's not talked about in the Greek, Greek language. There, there is no uh, mention of it in the New Testament. Whether it is good or bad, it's still man's idea. Uh, whether we choose to observe it or not, it is still man's idea. Thus to make rule or doctrine where God has made none is wrong. It is sin. We cannot bind on others what God has not bound. Also got another verse. Galatians chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. Galatians 4, 8 through 11. The context of Galatians 4 is the observance of Old Testament regulations by Christians. Um, it's different from Romans 14, though, because here in Galatians 4, it has been made a salvation issue. Clearly, there is a difference in the context of Galatians 4 and Romans 14. So Galatians 4, 8 through 11 reads, Formerly, when you did not know God, you were enslaved to those that by nature are not gods. But now that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elementary principles of the world, whose slaves you want to be once more? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid I may have labored over you in vain. What's the application? For Christians to observe the special days of the Old Testament as matters of salvation was wrong. Plain and simple. Uh, if, uh, in verse 9, Paul even calls such slavery. Now again, it's different from Romans 14. Romans 14 is talking about personal faith and practice. Galatians 4 is about on a congregational level. So would not the same teaching apply to the modern practice of making Christmas a holy day? If not, why not? Uh, to, for many churches, the observance of Christmas is a holy day for the church. It is essentially a salvation issue. And this is done on man's authority, not God's authority. Thus, it is wrong. So, let's take a look at some applications here. Should the church celebrate Christmas as a religious holiday or holy day? No, they should not. To do so adds to God's word. 1 Corinthians 4, 6 warns about going beyond what is written. Uh, doing this goes beyond what is written. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, also, to do so uh, is to bind on others what God has not bound. If as a church we force anyone to observe Christmas as a holy day, then we sin. Remember, we're no longer talking on a personal level, personal faith and practice. We're talking on a congregational level. But is there another alternative? Since a full-fledged observance of Christmas by the church would be wrong for in doing so, again, we, uh, we add to God's word and we bind on others what God has not bound. So if that's wrong, is there some way we can maybe celebrate in a, uh, in a limited way. While not recognizing Christmas as a holy day, can the church not recognize the significance of the birth of Jesus during the Christmas season? Can the church 
not take advantage of a season of the year when the thoughts of many people whom they're around every day who maybe won't, aren't, don't normally think about Jesus have turned their thoughts toward Jesus. In other words, should the church celebrate Christmas in a limited way? Well, let me share with you my observations first, based on what we've studied so far. My observations are, first of all, that any time the church chooses to recognize the birth of Jesus, it is the right thing to do. It is right to do so during the Christmas season. It, is, it would be equally right to recognize it during the summer months. It really it doesn't matter. Uh, anytime they want to recognize the birth, because again, the birth of Jesus has tremendous religious significance. And, and we, we should study it and we should appreciate it. You know, and the same with, for singing Christmas songs. Um, we, it's fine for us to go caroling and sing cultural as well as spiritual carols. And by the way, we can and we should sing songs like Joy to the World year round. Because it wasn't just Joy to the World in December. It was joy to the world all the time for Jesus coming to earth. This is a highly effective way to build bridges to unbelievers. And that is always, always a good thing to do. And yet at the same time, we should communicate that the celebration of Christmas as a holy day is a teaching of man and not a command of God. Now there are different ways that this can be done. But it should always be done with all sensitivity. Are we not given the obligation to teach the whole gospel? Even if we knew for certain the exact day on which Jesus was born in Bethlehem, it still wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter because, remember again, the Lord's Supper is the only commemorative act authorized by the New Testament. And so uh, we wouldn't, uh, we would just if we, even if we knew, it wouldn't make it right. <clears throat> so those are my observations. My conclusions based on those observations. First of all, since the world's thoughts are turned to Jesus during the Christmas season, it gives the church an opportunity to reach out to non-Christians. And again, that is always a good thing to do. We should be conscious of our non-Christian neighbors. And we should want to reach out to them at every opportunity. Visitors who come to church during the holiday season expect some recognition of the birth of Jesus. That's how they were conditioned or trained. Is it good? Is it bad? Who's to say? But that's what they expect. I once heard a preacher friend of mine say that one Easter he decided he was not going to preach on the resurrection. Because after all, we observe the Lord's Supper and honor His death, burial, and resurrection every Sunday. So why would Easter be so special? So he, he was in a series of other lessons and he just continued on with that series, had nothing uh, specifically to do with the resurrection. To make a long story short, there was a young man that was there that day that the preacher had been studying with. And he had been talking to him about the gospel. And this young man was, was almost ready to obey the gospel. But at the conclusion of service, that young man got up, walked out the door of the church building, and was never heard from again. The point is, we don't want to needlessly offend people and provide them an excuse not to listen to things that are salvation issues, like obeying the gospel. We don't want to, we don't want to do that. We, we need to take advantage of this season, this opportunity to reach out to non-Christians and, and draw them into the, the church, not push them away. So for the next three Sundays, we're going to look at some of the people that were associated with the birth of Jesus. To use this time of year as a bridge to bring non-Christians to a fuller understanding of the gospel is an acceptable and an effective, I might add, evangelistic strategy. Another conclusion. The degree a church participates in Christ Christmas activities can vary from year to year and from congregation to congregation. 
We shouldn't judge the practices of other congregations when their practice differs from our own. Now, if they go full-fledged, full-out into a celebration of Christmas as a holy day, then maybe we need to talk to them, not necessarily say that we're judging them, but you know, show them passages like the difference between Romans 14 and Galatians 4 and, and, and how that was a different context and that personally it's good, but as a congregation it's not. At the same time, we must be careful, very careful not to allow our participation in Christmas activities to, as a church to evolve into a holy day. We do not want a good thing to become a bad thing. We don't want to use our freedom as a cover-up for evil, like Peter warns in 1 Peter 2.16. So to answer the Christmas question, to celebrate Christmas personally, be it from a cultural standpoint or a religious standpoint, is a matter of personal freedom. For the church to make Christmas a holy day is inconsistent with scriptural teaching. But we can and we should use this time of year to reach out. If Jesus hadn't died, would any of us have a hope of, or a prayer of being saved? No. But he did die, didn't he? Now, if he hadn't been born, could Jesus have died? Well, no. He couldn't have. But he was born so that he could die so that we might live with him forever. So that we could be born again. Have you? Have you been born again? Have you followed what Jesus tells us to do in the New Testament? Being immersed in the watery grave of baptism. Having your sins washed away. Have you experienced the sheer joy that comes from that simple act of obedience? Maybe you have. But you haven't really been following through with it. You maybe have lost that joy. You can get it back. See, all you got to do is ask. And God will restore that joy to you. That restore to you that joy of salvation. And salvation is a joyous thing. Maybe to do that you need to privately just pray a prayer. Asking God to, to help you. To be more faithful in your service. In your commitment that you made to Him. Maybe you need to do something publicly. Whatever that need is. Don't leave here still having that need. If we can help you to make things right. Why don't you come to the front now as we stand and sing together?